So I'm going to hand it over to you and let you get cracking, man. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Tanmay. Um, I work in machine learning at Neva, which is a search AI startup, and previously did the same work at, at TikTok. Uh, so I'm here to be a bit of a buzzkill about LLMs and, and talk to you about the obstacles to deploying LLMs successfully to production. Um, so if you've spent any time in, on Twitter at all, you've probably seen uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of demos of LLMs. Um, if you work in industry, you've probably seen very, very few of these ever get deployed to production. Um, if you work in statistics, you probably hate me right now for not giving you a scale for this diagram. Um, but why do such great MVPs and demos never make it to production? Um, well, there's two big chunks of challenges that we see uh, with deploying LLMs to prod, um, and they come in the form of sort of infrastructural thorns and, and output linked thorns. Um, where infrastructural thorns kind of refer, refers to technical or integration linked challenges, um, where output linked thorns are essentially the output of the model, the text that it's generating uh, that might cause problems for, and block us from going to, to prod. Um, so when you come to the infrastructural side, there's sort of four big buckets that, that we look at problems in. The first is LLMs are slower than some of the status quo experiences we're used to. Um, a really good example of this is search, right? Where you have very, very quick results uh, that users are used to, but now when you start generating LLM output, um, it takes significantly longer for that response to complete as, ex as compared to their status quo experience. There's also a lot of decisioning that goes into taking LLMs to prod. Um, one of the biggest decisions is do you buy or do you build? Uh, where buy kind of refers to purchasing API access to a foundational model and build usually refers to fine tuning some sort of open source um, LLM. And so when it, you see the buying case tends to pose much smaller upfront costs, but as you scale, uh, starts creating a lot of challenges in terms of costs. Um, on the building side, there's much higher upfront cost and a lot more uncertainty on whether your LLMs will be um, at the quality level that you need it to be able to demo uh, or, or actually go to production. There's also some emerging challenges around API reliability in case you do choose to buy. Um, and this usually tends to emerge from cases where um, infrastructure, serving infrastructure is still being built up by foundational model providers um, and users can very quickly lose trust um, in cases deployed to prod. Um, when these, when they experience uh, even infrequent downtime. Uh, one of the bigger challenges is also evaluation. We're still leaning somewhat relatively heavily on the manual side, um, and we're looking for more and more clear quality metrics for this output. On the output link side, um, the, the major challenge that we're seeing, especially when you start integrating these models into pipelines, is output format variability. Uh, given that these are sort of generative models, there is a certain degree of unpredictability to the response, uh, which can make it quite challenging to sort of plug into some sort of pipeline that expects certain formats. Uh, this is the easiest one to solve, but there is a lack of reproducibility um, where the same input might give you different outputs even for the same model. Um, and then finally, we sort of come to this world of uh, adversarial attacks or adversarial users where you see challenges related to prompt hijacking and, and as an extension, trust and safety, uh, where the model might generate or be forced to generate um, intentionally malicious output that might be considered undesirable. But does this mean we're doomed? Are we always going to see sort of this case of very small case of production? I don't think so. Um, what I've just covered is sort of pretty much the whole landscape of challenges. Um, some of these are mutually exclusive. If you buy, you'll face some. If you build, you'll face some, but it's highly unlikely that you would face all of these challenges. Um, so let's talk solutions. When it comes to the infrastructural side, um, in terms of speed, you can make models faster or you can make models seem faster. Um, when you make models faster, that's sort of the conventional machine learning techniques of distillation, pruning, um, trying to use smaller models uh, where bigger ones are not necessary. This obviously sort of leans towards being able to build, um, but if you are buying, uh, there are ways to make models seem faster um, by leaning into human computer interaction techniques. So you can load animations, you can start streaming output, um, you can start parallelly using um, outputs to the core tasks that are more complementary versus blocking. Um, and in terms of cost and decisioning, 
this is a tough space, but there is a somewhat optimal approach, which sort of entails buying while you build. So using that low upfront investment, getting to market fast, validating your MVPs, and then over time sort of collecting data and fine tuning models uh, in house to make sure that your costs aren't getting infeasible in the long term with adoption. When it comes to sort of this foundational model reliability space, um, the best parallel or the best analogy is sort of this multi cloud approach, um, where you think about these fallbacks across different providers, we have yet to see a time where two of the major foundational providers have failed together. So this does seem to be a satisfactory approach to dealing with this. Um, there is also this component of failing gracefully. Um, users do understand that this is a technology in development. And so if we are reliant on sort of API reliability, um, it does make a lot of sense to think about what happens in the last resort case where you do fail um, to, to deliver output. And furthermore, when it comes to this evaluation infrastructure, um, the way I like to think about it is this is a great time to fail fast with fail safes. So make sure that you're not causing sort of trust and safety related failures. But when it comes to the core product itself, um, it's totally fine to start going to production faster um, and using very strong user feedback and feedback loops to make sure that uh, you're iterating as you go. Um, another really helpful approach is to link your LLM integrations to some sort of top line metric. So that could be anything from say stay duration to session length, um, and, and evaluating how this impacts that change. Um, on the output link side, um, output format variability is probably the largest chunk of challenge. Um, I would say in terms of um, reducing this to a huge amount, few shot prompting really helps. So you actually go ahead and give output examples in the prompt itself. Um, there's also a couple of really cool libraries. I think we, we had one of those speakers talk about these earlier, which is sort of guardrails and realm that can kind of help you validate output formats and actually iterate if you need to um, call the LLM again. Um, again, failing gracefully is always helpful. Just one easy fallback. Um, in terms of lack of reproducibility, this is absolutely the easiest one to solve. Uh, you can just set the temperature to zero. Um, I sort of think about prompt hijacking and trust and safety in one bucket, largely because uh, the main negative outcome of being prompt hijacked uh, does sort of lean towards generating outputs that a trust and safety layer could solve. Um, so I just want to end with some thoughts or, or tips around how you can start strong. How do you get your first LLM to prod and how do you make sure that, that use case succeeds? Um, the first and probably most vital aspect to think about is project positioning. It helps massively to be able to focus on deploying to non-critical workflows. Um, where you're able to add value, but not become a dependency. As we're sort of building up more reliable serving infrastructure, we can start serving more critical workflows, but things like output variability, API downtimes, sort of push us in this direction where we should be trying ideally to add value, but not become a dependency. Uh, it also helps to sort of have relatively higher latency use cases. Um, these are scenarios where things, where users have lower expectations of how quickly outputs will be generated. And so gives you more space to sort of create value um, and a low barrier to create value. The third one is probably the most key one to make sure your LLMs don't just go to prod, but stay in prod. Um, and this is to plan to build while you buy. So make sure that as you're working towards deploying your LLM with an API solution, um, you're also figuring out how in the long term you're able to scale those costs uh, in a manner that's feasible. And lastly, do not underestimate the HCI component. Um, in this case, LLM success is largely determined also by how it interacts with the user. And it really, really helps to sort of respond seemingly faster or fail gracefully or enable large scale user feedback. Um, and that's pretty much it from my end. Over to you. Chris. Nice. Dude. Awesome. Thank you so much for this. For those who want to keep up with the conversation and you want to ask Tanmay questions, because that was awesome, really incredible. There's some really cool questions coming through in the chat. Go ahead, jump in Slack. He's there. Go to conference, community conference channels and tag him. And uh, we can continue the conversation there. In the